Test, test. Which one you got for us, Ann? <laughs> I can mouth them. Oh, yeah, I know that one. All right, 603. Let's do it. It's a little after six. Yeah. I let y'all out too early this morning, so I'm going to keep y'all a little bit later this evening. I'm going to take back some of that time. I haven't had anybody complain to me lately that uh, I've been keeping them too long, so I guess I need to. I'm, I'm failing. I need to, need to work on that a little bit. But uh, thank y'all so much for being here this evening as we come to worship um, on Sunday evening. Um, the Bengals won. I almost wore my Bengals jersey. I'm not going to lie to you. They need some Jesus because they start playoffs next week. But uh, they won. They won their division, second year in a row. And so now they get to defend their AFC championship this year. If you can't tell, I'm a little excited. I was a little nervous. Because after what happened to that young man, they were going to make a fling, uh, coin toss. If the Baltimore would have won, even though Cincinnati was a division leader. Look, we're in church. We ain't going to talk about it. Bengals won. We're going to the playoffs, so let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this opportunity to come into your house and worship you. God, be with us this evening as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so we're going to sing 603 when we all get to heaven. 603 when we all get to heaven. on to that last note it was Tommy wasn't it see I knew it was either him or Mike I just I knew it was coming from that no you you should have been a hey, you can sing as loud as you want matter of fact you can drown us out or me out um so we have a few things uh to announce 
I'm excited that Awana has resumed this evening, and we got some of the kids uh, back in on Sunday evening. Uh, next Sunday is wear sunglasses if you have kids or grandkids. We're having our deacons meeting this Tuesday, January 10th at 7 p.m. right over here. Uh, Dicey Given Circle meeting starts January or starts is on January 10th at 5:30, right over there, somewhere down this hall. And then our church business meeting is Wednesday, January 18th at 7 p.m. And then we have communion on Sunday, the 29th. Mary gave me a flyer that I left on my desk about what's happening at Alice Drive Baptist Church. But just know if you would like to go, there's a comedian on there. I said, why do they have a comedian for senior adults? Y'all don't laugh at my jokes. Y'all ain't going to laugh at his. Anyway, you're welcome. Um, but uh, they got a comedian. They got the singer. And then there was somebody else they had on there. I think a speaker. Huh? The piano player. That's right. A pianist on there. So uh, if you want to go, the $20 is due by next Sunday to Mary or is that what you told me when you handed me the thing? I, I tuned you out. The money, if you want to go to Alice Drive, the money is due Wednesday night to Mary or Miss Sandra now. $20 this Wednesday night. All right, the 11th. We're good? It's for senior adults only. Uh, just, yeah, the Gators, not the Gaithers. We don't listen to no Gaithers around here. <laughs> Look, I didn't. I had never even heard of them. I sang him, their hymns for years. I'd never heard of them until I joined the Southern Baptist Church, and then people started talking about the actual people. I shoot, I just found out tonight Adrian Rogers was dead. I'm just kidding, but uh, I'm being serious this morning. When I didn't know who he was, when Mary asked me. All right, so the youth will be hosting a Valentine's supper fundraiser on Friday, February 10th at 6:30. Uh, great food, fun games, and photo booth tickets are going to be $10 a piece and could be purchased from any youth member starting next Sunday. See Jake or Maggie with any questions. So $10, come on out on that Friday and have some fun. Uh, bring your single friends. Maybe we can hook them up. It's going to be a dating. We'll do some speed dating for all the single. Ooh, I'm going to mention that to Jake and Maggie. We can do set up speed dating tables for all the singles. You can speed date. Hey, you never know now. You might Somebody might meet the love of their life out down there. How many of y'all met the love of your life in this church that's sitting here tonight? Yeah, exactly. Don't, mm, this one is not no. All right. But, yeah, so please uh, support the kids. February 10th, $10. Are there any other announcements that I am forgetting before we get into the word? All right. Well, this evening, if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it is called the love chapter. Um, many of us have heard it. I love it when folks that are getting married want it read at their wedding because Paul is telling the church at Corinth, which is very cor corrupt, very bankrupt. They don't really love anything but themselves. Um, Paul is telling them all about love and how to love. And so it's beautiful when it's said at weddings, but when you think of the context of why Paul's having to write it, it is far from anything that's happening at a wedding as anyone can be, right? Because that's what the church in Corinth was. They did not understand love. They didn't understand what it meant. You know, if you think about it, I was talking to the high school on Friday. Um, if you think about it, you know, you get away from the, from the sodomy and all that and Sodom and Gomorrah. The whole point to them was their lack of hospitality. Their lack of love. Like, you couldn't even go next door and ask for some salt. That's how the Sodomites were. They were not going to share. They didn't care. And they, they were related, some of them. It was just an ugly, ugly city. It was void of any type of love. And the love that was in there was all self-love, right? And that's where we start getting in trouble when we give into our flesh and we start loving things that are, we're not supposed to love but in um, 1 Corinthians 13, I'm just going to stick to two uh, verses, and then uh, we'll go about our business. We're going to be in uh, verses 7 and verse 8. And verse 7 starts, love bear, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So I think love bears all things. I think that's kind of uh, self-explanatory, right? 
Um, those of us that are married in here, we know that loving another person and living with another person, we have to bear a lot with one another, right? It's not easy living with somebody. It's not easy uh, being very uh, sleeping next to somebody who knows how to push your buttons. I'll put it like that. Right? It can be difficult. So we know that when we love somebody, we can deal with a lot of things. We can deal with a lot of things. There's a lot of stories about there, out there of women who never gave up. Never gave up. And God came through and brought them into a loving relationship. Because love can bear all things. Love can get us through anything and everything. You know, we don't talk about love enough in this church. So I figured tonight we'll talk about love. But love bears all things. If you truly love something, you'll be able to deal with it no matter what. They say, they do, because you can bear all things. And as Christ follows, that's what we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have love for one another, love for others. Then it says, believes all things. Now, this does not mean that you are naive. This does not say that the first snake oil salesman that comes in and tries to sell you a, 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 a sell, set of goods, excuse me, uh, does not mean you're going to believe everything they're saying. That is not what they're saying. It's saying that love believes all things. You believe in people. You don't believe that everyone is a lost cause. When I was in the military, we called it everyone was a nail and that person was a hammer. They come in that room and it didn't matter how good they were doing or how bad they were doing. He was going to find something to hammer. Love believes all things. There's still hope. When you have love-colored lenses on, when you believe in love, when you understand the love that it took for Jesus Christ to come on this earth and die on that cross, when we understand that, we can start believing that, you know what, if I can be saved, so can that person. Wait a minute, if God died for me, that means he died for them. Even if we don't like the way they look, like the way they talk, maybe like where they live necessarily. But love believes all things. That just means we don't lose hope. And it talks about hope here later on. But you have to have belief, right? To think that something is good enough to put effort into it. Because if I don't think something is good enough to put effort into, I'm just going to blow it up and walk away. Maybe you all haven't heard that term. But you kind of just turn around, knock the dust off your feet, show your soles of your feet, which was very, um, which was against customs in Jesus' day to show the soles of your feet. It's what we would say if someone was giving somebody the middle finger. That's what they were doing when they showed those cities and those people that would not listen to them. You're welcome for this evening. Then hopes all things. We know that the love of Jesus Christ that saves us, we know that that gives us hope. We always have hope no matter what. Period dot. We don't have to add a lot to that, right? Hopes all things. Period dot. Love is hope. Love is hope. Love is what brought Jesus down here on the, to die on that cross. Are, are we seeing how everything is connected? And see, this love is something that even if we're married, we really can't understand. We can say we do. And we can even get emotional about it. And that means you're tied in a little bit to it, right? But we really don't understand that love. Because we that's just something. That's like experiencing something in life. We really can't understand it until we go through it. And none of us will go through it. But we know that Jesus died for us because he loved us. And then even John tells us in 1 John, we love, why? Because he first loved us. So our love doesn't come from this, this raggedy thing that we call a body or heart or soul. It comes from God. This love is supernatural. This love is divine. And it's a love that we are supposed to have and we are supposed to express in our daily lives. But it hopes all things. And then the last thing it says here is it endures all things. And, and again, not to kick a dead horse, beat a dead horse, but you can get through anything. Love is a positive, right? It's hard to go through life when we hate everything. And I've been there. Everybody I saw, I just wanted to hurt. I didn't care who they were. I didn't care who their mom was. 
I didn't care what family they were from. Everything stunk. And my life stunk. You can't see the good when you live like that. You can't see the good when you have so much hatred in your heart for a certain person or for certain people or a certain demographic. You, you can't see the good that's actually happening. Because we're so negative. We're in that pit. We're in that tar. But it's that love that is positive, and we come from a positive set frame of mind, and we look at things and say, and this is something I really have to work with, and I think you all know this. Is what they're saying a dig? Or is it really a joke? Or is it name something else? And I think we all do that, right? What is their angle? What is that person's angle? Are they, are they trying to point something out, and I'm just not catching it? Is there talk that I'm not hearing that all of a sudden they're saying something to me? We've all been there. We've all heard comments and we start thinking, we start putting ourselves there. Was that about me? But if we come from a positive loving, we can get through all that. We can get through anything. We can live a positive life. We can endure anything. It's like my friend who lost her child, Riley, the other day. Every post she puts on Facebook, no matter how sad it is, she always talks about she's thankful that she is with Jesus. I couldn't imagine losing a kid. But she endures it because of the love that God has shown her through this. And it's not a love she's going to get from anywhere in this world. She can only get it from God. So then if we go down to verse 8, love never ends. Paul's telling them love is eternal. Love is not something that is um, transactional, right? Maybe some of us grew up in those homes. You had to get those straight A's to feel loved. You had to be the sports superstar to feel loved. You had to go work out on the farm to feel loved. You could put anything in there. And then if you did anything other than what your parents wanted you to do, there was no love. That's called transactional. Well, God's love is not transactional. God's love is free. God's love is eternal. God's love is abundant. Regardless, hear what I'm saying. He died for you before you got saved. Think about that. That's not transactional at all. It was transactional. God could have said, I'm going to wait to die for y'all. Well, I want to wait to see if I have to die for y'all because maybe you guys can pull, pull it through. Maybe you guys can turn this little, this little train around. But that's not what God did. God's love is not transactional. It's free. But it never ends. It's eternal. And because of that, it is eternal. It never ends. Everything else, and what we're getting ready to read is everything else can go. Everything else in our lives can cease to be. But love will always remain. He says, as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. But love, if you go back to the first part of that scripture, never ends. So when we think about things ending in our lives, one thing that we're promised, and that's what I love, one thing that we're promised is no matter how we feel about ourselves, because believe it or not, that's what the young folks are dealing with today. Thanks to the media, thanks for the stuff that they're fed um, via TV, and I'm going to tell you right now as a parent, um, I can shield my kids so much, but they still go to school. And my kids have come home and told me things I didn't know. And the world that we are in today, it is very difficult to sh teach these kids what love really is. That it's not something that ends because they've done X, or because they look like X, or because they come from X, or because they can't afford X. And that's what our youth, that's what our kids are facing today. They don't know what that unconditional love is like. All they know is the transactional love. Do this for me and I'll hang out with you for right now. And then what makes it bad is, you know, even when I was in school before social media, you just duked it out in the parking lot and it was done. Well, you can't do that anymore. Even though you do get out in the parking lot, it's going to get recorded. Then it's going to get uploaded. Then the cops are going to come, and then they're going to bully you if you lost the fight. You see where I'm going with this? Our youth today don't understand this eternal love. They don't. 
even talking to my kids, they don't understand this. Because when they're at school, they get inundated with so much. Well, this is what so-and-so is telling me. And if you've had kids, you know you can tell them until you're blue in the face. But let their buddy at school who is in the same grade kindergarten as them, and they know more than you do at 43 years old. But they don't understand this enduring love, this forever love. And we have to teach them that no matter how you're feeling today, no matter what may cease to exist in your life today, love is forever. No matter what kind of home life you may have come from, no matter what kind of home life you may come from, love endures forever. But it's only a love that Jesus Christ can give. It's not a love that I can give. It's not a love that you can give. We can share it. We can be the hands and feet of Jesus. We can make disciples. But this love has to be shared, especially with our youth. And I know y'all see him walking around. I know y'all see him in the, in the grocery store. And here's one thing I do love about this town. There is not a young person that I've met. I don't care what kind of clothes they have on, what they look like. If I say something to them, it's not, yes, sir, or what, sir. This town has some very respectful young people in it. And so we know something's being done right. I just looked on Facebook before we came here. I guess last night some parents dropped some kids off at the Sumter movie theater. And they were out in the parking lot lighting off fireworks and running and so right we you all don't have that problem here not because you don't have a theater but i think these kids find a little bit more stuff to do and they're a little more respectful but that's not common i'll just tell you that right now what what we have in turbyville is not common across the united states and i think everyone understands that but love endures forever love will never fade away the love of god never ends let's pray father thank you for your love we thank you for the ability to be able to talk about your love god the ability to be able to share your love god and i thank you for your love that you sent your son to die so i could be standing here today god sharing this amazing example of love this amazing source of love with others so god you know what's going on in each and every person's life this evening I just pray, God, that you show yourself to them, God, that you help them get somewhere where somebody can share the gospel with them. Somebody can share that love with them if they are saved and they've just kind of turned their back if they've walked away. God, put them in the path of somebody who will help them back towards you and that eternal love. So, God, just be with us the rest of this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so prayer requests. Uh, I got the ones from this morning. Um, pray for those that have COVID. Uh, Chris McLaughlin, the Rash family, uh, Bob Coker, uh, the Christine Bennett family, and Hoyt and Phyllis Yates and Benny Welch. Is there any other besides the normal list that we need to add that we can think of? necessarily a bad thing all right any praises yes are they gonna put a pacemaker in them no they're gonna hold off okay gotcha all right that's awesome so she'll find out soon if it's in remission, good, so we'll be praying for that, but that is a praise. All right, anyone else? All right. Alex, you mind closing us out in prayer, sir?